Good morning, everyone. As always, place your cross on first, no matter what's going on in your life. Hey, keep praying. Keep praying. God will make a way. God will fix things. Not how you want them to be fixed, but he'll fix things what's best for you. Our Father, which are in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. You know, a lot of times when I'm trying to figure out how I should be walking and acting, I go to Peter and James. I just Those books just draw to me. It's like when I feel like I'm falling backwards a little bit, I need to get back on track. I, I love Peter. I read Peter, and it'll get me, get me back. You understand? And there's a lot of scriptures out there for separate people. You know what I'm saying? And if you read it, you'll be like, okay, let me get back right. You understand? But I'm going to read from James today. James, a servant of God and of the Lord Jesus Christ, to the twelve tribes which are scattered abroad, greeting. My brethren, count it all joy when you fall into diverse temptations, knowing this, that the trying of your faith worketh patience. What do he say? That the trying of your faith worketh patience. But let patience have her perfect work, that you may be perfect and entire, wanting nothing. Think about this, wanting nothing. Like get, you get into a stage where you're just so content that it's not really nothing you're really asking for. Think about that. If any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of God that give us to all men liberally and upbraid of not, and it shall be given him. Why a lot of people ain't wise? We're so busy asking for material things, a new car, this, that, that, that. You understand? But what's the use of your finances increasing if you're not wise enough to manage them? You need wisdom. Get understanding. Bind it upon your heart. Write it on your arms. You know, you need wisdom in order to operate in this world. But let him ask in faith, nothing wavering. For he that wavereth is like a wave of the sea, driven with the wind and tossed. For let not that man think that he shall receive anything of the Lord. A double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. You know what God is saying? Make up your mind. You can't pray for this one day. And then be like, no, I'm going to pray for that. Uh, I don't want that. Do you understand? You can't keep flip-flopping. Make up your mind. And the thing is, I struggle with this. You understand? I struggle with this, and I'm sure the majority of people struggle with things. But just make up your mind and stay at it. You know, if you keep switching up, how can you expect God to answer what you're asking for? If you're confused, God is not going to get, he's going to do what's best for you. Let's put it that way. But don't expect it to happen if you don't even know what you really want. Let the brother of low degree rejoice in that he is exalted, but the rich in that he is made low, because at the flower of the grass he shall pass away. For the sun is no sooner risen with a burning heat, but it wherewith the grass and the flower thereof follows, and the grace of the fierce fashion of it perisheth. So also shall the rich man fade away in all his ways. You know the Bible always talks about how hard is it for the rich to inherit the kingdom of heaven. You know, a lot of people, rich, get prideful, but they have to be humble. Take the things, take what just happened with uh, Will Smith. You know, sometimes money will make you do some stupid things. You know what I'm saying? You got to think about what's going to happen right there. He didn't even know that he was going to get an award. And right? And then right before that happens, he snaps on the stage. You understand? Sometimes things like that got to happen to humble you, to bring you back down to reality. You understand? Blessed is the man that endures temptation, for when he is tried, he shall receive the crown of life, which the Lord hath promised to them that love him. Endureth temptation. You know what that means? Like, resist it. Like, go against it. You done went through so many. One thing about this is like, that's why the Bible says, lead us not into temptation. It's a lot of temptations out there. You don't have to draw away with every lust in your mind. When, it, when the Bible say, when is sin produced? When men are drawn away. Or people are drawn away by their own lust. Do you understand? That's when sin is to produce. 
It starts with a temptation. It starts with somebody trying to, or uh, something trying to draw you this way where you know you shouldn't be doing it. But if you resist it, eventually, that's what's going to happen. It's going to get easier and easier. That's why the Bible talks about patience. It gets easier over time. But if you keep giving into it, it's going to stay drawing you to it. You understand? But you got to resist it. Let no man say when he is tempted, I am tempted of God. For God cannot be tempted with evil, neither tempteth he any man. I just said this. I didn't even know that was in this chapter. But every man is tempted when he is drawn away of his own lust and enticed. It ain't got nothing to do with God. It got something to do with you or us or me or whoever. You know, you can't blame God for that. Who's the tempter? The devil. The devil to throw the temptation out there to draw you to it. Because he, I, one thing about the devil, he don't know everything, but he knows characteristics of people. He's been around for a long time. He know what can get you. And he'll lay it right there for you. But what you got to do? You got to resist it. Do not err, my beloved brother. Every good gift and every perfect gift is from above and come up down from the Father of lights, with whom in no variables, neither shadow of turning. Of his own will begot he us with the word of truth, that we should be a kind of first fruits of his creatures. Wherefore, my beloved brethren, let every man be swift to hear, slow to speak, slow to wrath. For the wrath of man worketh not the righteousness of God. Wherefore, lay apart all filthiness and superfluity and nothingness, and receive with meekness the engrafted word which is able to save your souls. But be ye doers of the word, and not hearers only, deceiving your own self. For if any man be a hearer of the word, and not a doer, he is like unto a man beholding his natural face in a glass. For he will behold himself, and go of his way, and straightway forget of what manner of man he is. That goes back to the soul of the seed too. Those that hear the word, and instantly the devil comes and take it away from you. You understand? But so whoso, but whoso looketh into the look of into the perfect law of liberty and continueth therein, he being not a forgetful hearer, but a doer of the work, this man shall be blessed in his deed. So you gotta stay at it. You know, it's a it's a learning process. You know, the more the word grafts into you, the more you wanna wanna live by it. Because it's you remember it. It's like muscle memory. It's like okay, before a lot of things happen in your life. You know, think about that word. Think about what you've been taught in regards to the word of truth. If any man among you seem to be religious and brittle, if not his tongue, but deceives his own heart, this man's religion is vain. Pure religion and undefiled before God and Father is this, to visit the fatherless and widows in their affliction and to keep himself unspotted from the world. Look out for others. He said esteem others higher than yourself. You understand? Does that make sense? My brethren, have not the faith of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Lord, of glory with respect to persons. For if there come into your assembly a man with a gold ring and goodly apparel, and there come in also a poor man in vile raiment, and you have respect to him that weareth the gay clothing, and say unto him, Sit thou here in a good place, and say to the poor, Stand thou there, or sit under my footstool, are you not then partial in yourselves, and have become judges of evil thoughts? You see what sin is? Think about that what he just said. And the real the weird part is I just talked about this. You know, showing respect to persons. And people do it all the time, especially in churches. Or not even just churches, just anywhere. You know, you look at the person that down and out. Like, think about the world we live in, right? The world we live in. It's, it's crazy. Let's say somebody come in for a job interview. And they looking all rough and rugged. I'm talking about clothes like they've been washed. Dirty. Look like they ain't bathed in a second, right? But you know what most job people gonna do? They're gonna turn him away. But if somebody coming in all flashy, talking good, you get the job. Now use your common sense here now. Who do you really think needs the job? I'm just being real with you. Use your discernment. This person looks like they're struggling. So it's up to you to give him a chance. You understand? But somebody coming in all flashy. One thing about I work in the movie industry. You come in here too flashy, I'm gonna be like, I really don't even expect this person to last long at this profession. But that man right there, he came in here with raggedy broke down shoes on. 
Look like he need a helping hand. And he stepped in here like that. Do you understand what I'm saying? But in this world, it's, it's just the opposite. It's like the person that's fancy and look how flashy, they get what they want. You understand? It's weird how this world operates, but it's common sense. And you wonder why so many homeless people out there. Because people are not willing to give the homeless man a chance. You know? Most jobs come with work uniforms. Give them a uniform. Simple. You got a bathroom at McDonald's? Let them go in there and wash up. You know what I'm saying? If it don't work, and give them a chance. Hearken, my beloved brethren. Have not God chosen the poor of this world rich in faith and heirs of the kingdom which he hath promised to them that love him? But you have despised the poor. Do not rich men oppress you and draw you before the judgment seats? I told you, when you want to snap back to reality and realize what you're supposed to be doing, read this Bible. Do not they blaspheme that worthy name by which you are called? If you fulfill the royal law according to the scripture, thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself, you do well. But if you have respect to person, you commit sin and are convinced of the law as transgressors. For whosoever shall keep the whole law and yet offend in one point, he is guilty of all. For he that said, do not commit adultery, also said, do not kill. Now if thou commit no adultery, yet if thou kill, thou art become a transgressor of the law. So speak ye and do so, as they that shall be judged by the law of liberty. For he shall have judgment without mercy, that have showed no mercy. And mercy rejoiceth against judgment. What doth it profit, my brother, though a man say he have faith and have not works? Can faith save him? Faith and have not works. Can faith save him? You know, this morning, this morning, I'm going to tell you a story. A few months ago, probably last year, I offered someone a job, and I was like, he was like, I will work, I will work. So I brought him in. He worked with me two days, and then the next day he was like, well, I found somewhere else, right? I found another job. Like, all right, you know what I'm saying. Today, I get a message from this person. Do you have any work here? Well, I can't lie. We got. We really don't have a lot of work, but we have work, and we have enough people right now. I can't. You understand? Let's put it this way. Sometimes people open doors for you, and God opens a door for you, and you don't walk in, and you lose it. You understand? You know, because a lot of people don't like to do certain things. But it's that faith without works is dead. All right? You tell somebody, you tell God you want a job. And then he give you one. And then you just quit it. Think about it. You got enough faith to pray for the job. And he'll give you the job. And then you'll be like, no, I don't want to work there. I've been there too, man. I've been in a spot where I didn't want to work for real. You know, when I first started as a Christian, I thought praying was just going to bring everything to me. And faith. But then I started reading my Bible and studying. And I was like, I got to get back to work. You know, so I understand what you're going through. You know, um, he said, a little fold no hands, a little bow in the head to sleep, so shall poverty come upon this man. He said, that's what a lot of people do. Oh, I pray all the time. All right. Get to work. It's simple. If a brother or sister be naked or destitute of daily food, and one of you say unto them, depart in peace. Be warm and filled, notwithstanding you give them not those things which are needful to the body. What doth it profit? It's like somebody come to your house. And you know you got it. Do you have a cup of sugar? Or this or that? I ain't really got it. Just pray for Pray on it. And you just send them away. I done seen churches do this. People come up to the altar. Praying for help. In regards to. Their situation. And the church turned them away. I done seen this before. Think about it. If they like they're inside the church. They ain't no different outside of it. Even so, faith, if it hath not works, is dead, being alone. Yea, a man may say, Thou hast faith, and I have works. Show me thy faith without thy works, and I will show thee my faith by my works. Thou believest that there is one God, thou doest well. The devils also believe and tremble. You see, one thing about the devils, they know God is real. But would thou know, O vain man, that faith without works is dead? Was not Abraham our father justified by works when he had offered, the Isaac, offered Isaac his son upon the altar? See is that how faith wrought with perfect works, and by works was faith made perfect? 
and the scripture was fulfilled, which said Abraham believed God and was a pun unto him for righteousness, and he was called a friend of God. But what did Abraham do? You know, what's the word? People are, the law will provide, right? So Abraham went up there, being obedient, offered, a, offered my son up, right? And right when he was about to do it, y'all was like, no, nah, look over there. I got you. But you got to go and be obedient to the master. You see how that by works, a man is justified and not by faith only. Likewise, also was not Rahab the harlot justified by works when she had received the messenger and had sent them out another way? For as the body without the spirit is dead, so faith without works is dead also. My brethren, be not many masters. I'm listening to this now. Knowing that we shall receive the greater condemnation. For in many things we offend all, if any man offend not in word, the same as a perfect man, and able to brittle the whole body. Behold, we put bits in horses' mouths, that they may obey us, and we turn about their whole body. Behold, also the ships, which though they be so great, and are driven by fierce winds, yet they turn about with a very small helm, whensoever the governor listeth. Even so, the tongue is a little member, and boasts of great things. But how great it matter, a little fire kindleth. And the tongue is a fire, a world of iniquity. So is the tongue among our members, that it defileth the whole body. This goes back to what I was saying. It's not what goes inside the man, what defiles a man. It's what comes out of a man. Your mouth, and he just said, be slow to speak, swift to hear. You know, a lot of people just want to hear what they got. They wanna, they're so quick to talk. And then they say, you know, they put their foot in their mouth. Pay attention now. For, for every kind of beast and of birds and of serpents and of things in the sea is tamed and have been tamed of mankind. But the tongue can no man tame. It is an unruly evil full of deadly poison. He said no man. So when he said no man, he's talking about himself too. A lot of people don't look at it like that. Therewith, bless we God. You see, he put himself in there. Therewith, bless we God, even the Father, and therewith curse we men, which are made after the similitude of God. That's why you got to pray every day. Out of the same mouth proceeded blessing and cursing. My brother, these things ought not to be. Now, you got to understand what I'm saying by blessing and cursing. Cursing is wishing harm. Blessing, that's what cursing is. I just want y'all to know this now. Doth a fountain send forth a, at the same place of sweet and bitter? Can the fig tree, my brethren, bear olive berries? Are they vine figs? So can no fountain both yield salt water and fresh. Who is a wise man and a dude with knowledge among you? Let him show out of good conversation his works with meekness of wisdom. But if you have bitter envying and strife in your hearts, glory not and lie not against the truth. What he says, but if you have bitter envying and strife in your heart, but it's earthly, I mean, and glory not and lie not against the truth. But wisdom, this wisdom descendeth not from above, but it's earthly, sensual, devilish. For where envy and strife is, there is confusion in every evil word. What he say? Where there is envy and strife, there is confusion in every evil word. A lot of that's what a lot of confusion starts from that right there. Envy in one another. Strife. Envy causes strife. But the wisdom that is from above is first pure, then peaceful, gentle, and easy to be entreated, full of mercy and good fruits, without partiality and without hypocrisy. And the fruit of righteousness is sown in peace of them that make peace. Sown in peace of them that make peace now. You know, uh, one of the Psalms David talks about, he said, when I speak, I am for peace, but they are for war. Now think about that. Think about that right there. You for peace and they for war. It ain't going to work. What's going to happen? You understand? You ain't going to come to win on that? You know, as a Christian, you could, should consider yourself a peacemaker. But you got to understand that everybody's not going to want peace. Let me pause and I will continue.